Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Keeping Goals. If you're new here, my name is Connor O'Keefe and Keeping Goals is a vlog following my attempt at becoming a professional goalkeeper. Today, in this week's vlog, we have something a little bit different for you. Something that a lot of you have been asking for, which is a gym workout for goalkeepers. More specifically, this week, we're looking at a strength workout for goalkeepers. Obviously, for this, I need some expertise, so I'm joined by Jordan. Jordan and I have played together on the Loughborough University football team for the past year. He also has a lot of specialist knowledge in strength and conditioning, so is a great person to get involved for this. So in terms of myself, I did my uh, degree out in America in uh, exercise science. And then ever since I've come back from America about 18 months ago, I've been uh, working externally as a practitioner and a personal trainer, starting off on a wide variety of different clients and folks. Uh, but really my passion is to get people like Connor athletically better and improve them to get that extra inch to try and make it professional. And during the last season I've had the, I've had the privilege of working with the Leicester First team, seeing how they work with all the elite athletes, so that's been a great development for myself as well. Uh, and I'm just about to complete my Masters in uh, Exercise Physiology. This is something that can hopefully help you with your goalkeeping with a session that you can apply to yourself to help you improve. What's the focus of the strength session for today? So I think the, the main variant from this type of session to say your stereotypical gym session is we're focused on athletic development. So we're focusing on those little inches that are gonna make you a better athlete. Mm. So you won't see us doing many stuff like bicep curls or tricep dips, stuff that isn't applicable to football. Everything we're gonna to do today is gonna to transfer straight over onto the field to make us a stronger, fitter and a faster athlete. Yeah, well as a goalkeeper, obviously the areas that I wanna be focusing on are gonna be the strength of my legs, the power for me to come and jump, the strength of my upper body to come through players, the stability within my joints when I'm making saves, and that's something that we're gonna be working on. So, what's the first exercise? So, the first thing I'm gonna move on to is the trap bar deadlift. Brilliant. Okay, let's get on with it. Come into a a squat position, I want to keep his chest nice and high, you keep that back nice and flat, and really try and activate his glutes and the back of his hamstrings. He's going to reach down for the bar in this position, try and keep looking forward, because so if, he, if he doesn't look forward, that's when you kind of put a bit too much stress on your back. Mm -hmm. So from this position, putting a lot of force straight through the soles of both feet, and all I want you to do from this position, keeping arms locked out the whole time, push through your heels all the way up to the top, extend those hips at the top, and basically what this is really going to work on con, Glutes, hamstrings, quads, all those major muscle groups you really need for goalkeeping to drive that strength. You're going to drag up. Nice, and low down nice and slow. So each time, Con's going to reset the bottom and bring it all the way back up to the top. Go nice and controlled up and down. You see Con stay nice and stable, nice and controlled, especially in the top half. Keep that back nice and flat so there's no pressure going through that lower back. So for this exercise, we're looking Depending on what, what the weight you're using, we're going to look between 8 to 12 reps. So the heavier you go, obviously the less reps you perform. Really good problem. But you'll start really feel that burn, especially in that glute and the hamstring area, driving up and down. So the most important thing with this, like Slacky was saying, make sure you execute the moves correctly. If that means you need to use less weight, use less weight. Don't listen to your ego and put loads of weight on and then ruin your movement because that's when you get injuries. Make sure you use a weight that's right for you, perform the movement correctly, that's what will bring you the most benefit. So the next movement here that Connor's doing is the RDL. So the main principle of the RDL 
as you'll see here, what Con's doing it, is drilling primarily these hamstrings long and strong. So that's the main running theme that runs with the hamstring. So main, main reason we really try primarily with the hamstrings is, number one, the amount of hamstring tears and ruptures you have, especially in football, is, is very, very high. So we really want, so for, in terms of injury prevention, working the hamstring is very important. Also with footballers, you notice that a lot of them are very quad dominant. So the asymmetry and imbalance between the quad and the hamstring is usually generally high from all the kicking and all the leg extension. So what we really want to do is really work on these that maybe don't get enough work when he's out on the field. So the movement he's performing is the RDL. So how Connor's going to do it, well, as soon as he comes back up to the top of the movement, nice straight body, he's going to act as though he's rolling the bar down his legs, soft bending his knee, pushing this bum back, keeping his back nice and flat. As soon as he gets to the bottom of the movement around here, he'll feel a bite in the back of his hamstring. That's where I want Con to move. Nice control, bring it back up to the top. For guys who maybe aren't as flexible as Con, who haven't got the same range of motion, they might not be able to bring the ball all the way down to the floor. And this way, if Connor just comes a bit higher here, this might be your limit. But you notice he's still got his back flat, scapula's retracted, and you'll notice that his hamstrings are still long and strong. So this, depending on your ability level, depending on how low you can go and how high you have to stay. So in terms of sets and reps, very similar to the trap bar deadlift, we're probably working between 8 to 12 reps. We generally do between 3 to 4 sets, depending on the length and duration of your session. So with all of these movements and exercises, we're working for 3 sets between 8 to 12 reps. What do I change if I can hit 12 comfortably, if that's fine for me with the weight that I'm at? So in terms of the overload principle, what we're really looking for, if you can perform, let's say you can perform eight reps very comfortably, mm -hmm. that's when you, you pretty much stick with the same weight, but you might try and get to the 10, the 12 marker. Yeah. But say as soon as you're at the same weight, you get to that 12 marker, you're hitting that comfortably, that's when you need time to add some weight on. Mm -hmm. And then you start back at the bottom of the food chain, so you can start back and try to hit the eight reps. Mm -hmm. But I, I always say, in terms of rep ranges, you, the last couple of reps should be a bit of a struggle. Yeah. Obviously, form still being right, but I always think that by this eighth rep or by this twelfth rep, whichever you, number you're aiming for, in that, the last one you can do is physically the last one you can do before yeah. you take a breather. Yeah. What's the next exercise? What are we moving on to now? Perfect. So the next exercise here is the glute bridge. So this is really working on this posterior. So this is really working on this hip thrust motion through here and really trying to work on these glutes. So we're going to start in this position. Make sure a bench is placed behind you. And make sure the plate's placed on the bar before, just so you can easily roll the bar up onto your hip region. What does help as well, if you do have a pad, just so it's less uncomfortable on the, the pubic bone. So you're gonna bring it all the way through into this position. Legs gonna be about shoulder width apart. And all I want you to do from this position, you're gonna place elbow, elbow onto the bench. Take a deep breath in, reach you up to the top. And on the bench, what I want you to do is, this bench is gonna position itself right underneath your shoulder blades. As soon as you're in a comfortable position, you're going to place your hands just a couple of inches outside of your leg. Typically, your legs are just a little bit further than 90 degrees. Then from this position, what you want to do, you're going to push through, extend the hips up to the top. I'll still let go of the bar as I'm doing now, but what I really want you to do is really activate these muscles in here. So the hamstrings will be activated and also all the glutes. So you'll bring up to the top, low back down. Nice and powerful on the way up. Hold for a second at the top. Nice and easy on the way down. Obviously, in terms of weight, as Con spoke about earlier, the heavier you have it, the harder it is to push up. If you can get to, if you get to a stage where you can't fully extend, that means the weight's typically too high because I really want to extend this range of motion all the way up to the top. As soon as you've finished, drop back down onto your elbows, just push the bar away, and you're all done. Elbows on here. There. You see, he's constantly doing it here. He's got a really good range of motion, pushing all the way up to the top, lowering all the way down, dropping down as deep as he can, really trying to extend that hip extension through. Nice. The main reason we hold for about a second at the top is really trying to fire those glutes, we're really trying to activate the, that posterior chain. Nice. This one's a really powerful movement. This is a real big strength move that you can adhere into your program to really make some adaptations to the back of your body. So to summarise, as we've just finished the lower body strength 
exercises before we move on to upper body how did the exercises that we've just performed how do they transfer into goalkeeping so in terms of the three we've just done so we did the trap bar over here that was really looking at anterior so this is really looking more quad development also working on your glutes that's also trying to really try to push that force through the floor so not only is that developing strength it's also going to help with your vertical power mm -hmm. so in the power session we perform next week that's really going to help you propel yourself into this, so whether you're catching a ball, driving to the left, driving to the right. Yeah. In terms of RDLs, obviously it's making the hamstrings nice and strong, but it's also increasing flexibility for that range yeah. of motion. So whether you have to do it, let's say out stretching your right leg, out stretching your left leg. Uh, and then as we go into the glute bridge, that's really just transferring force from those glutes, really pushing it into action through that hip extension. Obviously that, that transfers over to all kind of athletic sports. So yeah. whether you, you're bursting through, whether it's into a sprint, whether you're going to play the ball, of course, yeah, so yeah. that is transferable and applicable straight into goalkeeping and in general football. So, next one, what are we moving on to? So, next next stage we're going to move into some upper body movements. So, the first two I'm going to show you is a pull exercise and a push exercise. So, for pull exercise, which I'm going to show you first, this is where we're working on the back. So, this is where we're working on your rear delts, looking at your traps, your lats, all these muscles that, that belong to this posterior chain at the back. Yeah. So, the first one I'm going to get going to show you guys is a, ch a wide grip chin up. So from this position, arms are going to be just wider than shoulder width apart, really trying to retract the scapular back to begin with. And then all he's going to do when he's ready, pull himself up to the top, get his chin over the bar, and nice and controlled on the way back down. So as you'll notice, his lats are in full force, biceps working, pulling himself up to the top, and nice and controlled on the way back down. So this is a really great movement, especially these areas at the back. The primary upper body we want is really working on this core and this trunk section. This is, this is like the powerhouse of the body. This is where all your force is generated from. So as much as triceps, biceps look good on the beach as your beach body, not as applicable to football as something similar to this, where you're really working compound movement, all these muscles on, along the posterior chain. So unfortunately, not everyone is the strongest cod to be able to do wide grip chin up straight away. So a slight alternative that I use for some of my athletes that can't yet progress to a pull up is a TRX row. So from this position, a slight regression of the chin up, but still with the same mechanism, still working on the same muscle groups. So what I want Con to do, he's going to grab onto the, the straps here, and he's going to walk his feet in towards the black bar at the end, as far as he likes. Good. From this position, he's going to straighten his arms out. So he's in a, he's in a similar position to what he was when he was doing the chin up. <laughs> but this time, he's in a horizontal position. So what I want him to do for me, he's going to pull up to the top of the movement, Hold for a second, nice control on the way back down. Very similar movement, but this time instead of having to hang and having to hold his own body weight, the strap's taking a bit of a slack for him. Similar to this one with the chin ups, we usually aim in between 8 12 reps, as we have done for most of them, and we try and perform 3 to 4 sets. Good, and what Con's going to do, if that is still too difficult, he's going to walk his feet more this way, keeping his heels planted on the ground, and you do exactly the same, but from this position. So the easier you want it to be, the more your feet go into this direction. The harder you want it to be, the more it's going towards a vertical position that comes just in. So, moving on from the pull movements, what follows on? So, so next, the, the polar opposite of the pull is we're going for the push movement. So this is where we're basically working on this chest development, the, the frontal shoulders, and also working on the bit of tricep development as well. So what we're going to do, have Con doing here is just a, a basic press up to start off with. So, so all I want Con to do nice and controlled, this keep this core nice and controlled. Good, it's going to be nice and stable the whole way through, keeping their hips nice and level. Nice, so you'll notice Con's hands are just wide this shoulder width apart. So this is really letting him get really down to the bottom of the motion of the movement. Got some nice control on the way up and way down. So this is really working on that chest, the shoulders, the back of the triceps. So as you can see, Com could probably do these press ups the rest of his life because he's been doing these quite a while now and he's a good athlete so the way to advance this for any of you at home that have got used to press ups is to add a weight so this weight is going to do just below his shoulder blades in this position 
This way it really is important to keep his core nice and switched on just so you're not putting too much pressure on the lower back. And then Connor's going to perform the exact same movement just with the plate on his back. And all this is doing is just adding a little bit of weight to his body weight just to make the move a bit more difficult. And similar to what I've explained with the weight scheme already, if he gets to a stage where he's complete about 12 to 15 of these quite comfortably, then you either up the weight load on his back or just perform more reps to overload it. So in, in terms of press-ups, if you're doing standard press-ups without the weight on your back, you can probably look between 20 to 30 reps because it's more of a muscle endurance exercise. When you're getting a bit more advanced and you're getting the weight on your back, this way we're following a similar scheme to the others where we're looking between 8 and 12 reps. So the next thing we're going to move on to, obviously as a goalkeeper, shoulder health is really important. Obviously as Con knows his previous injury, making these shoulders nice and stable, nice and strong is very, very important. So what we're going to do in this next move is what I like to call shoulder 21. So basically what we're going to do is try and move these shoulders in all different planes of motion, try and strengthen them frontal, middle and a rear perspective. So what I want him to do for the first one, he's going to do seven front raises, bring it all the way to there, and load down nice and slowly, nice and easy. So this is really working on these front delts here right at the front. Nice one. Keep that core nice and braced the whole time, back nice and flat. And what you notice Con doing really well is not swinging his arms, he's not swinging his legs, nice and controlled, there's no swinging motion. As soon as he's finished seven that side, what he's going to do, rotate his palms out to the side so knuckles facing the walls out of the side. And all I want to do is he's going to come out laterally this time and lower all the way down. So this is really working on those medial delts this time. Go this really open up these shoulders in the plane of motion is not really performed very often, and especially in confessions goalie where he's making saves like this a lot, it's really important to be strong in this position. Nice, and then the last seven, he's going to flip the dumbbells into this position, so palms will be facing me, and all I want him to do is going to try and bring it, retract his scapula so the edge of the dumbbells are about facing his neck, ear level, and all we're going to do from this position is push up to the top, and lower all the way back down. So we're just going to bring them together at the top like this. And again, this pressing motion is probably the easiest one of the three, but because we're performing it pre-fatigued plus the other two, this makes it slightly more difficult as well. So this is really trying to work those shoulders. So with this one working more muscular endurance, because it's kind of a higher rep range, so this is where it will really start to get tough and the shoulders will start to get a bit tasty. It's good to pinch your scapula as well, you can feel it working yeah. as it's going on. Right, so, so what Con's performing now is an upper body plank walk. So what you'll see, his body's in a plank position just as you were if you're on your forearm, but we're making it a bit more dynamic. So how he's doing is going up through the shoulder, back through and across, so he's going diagonally back and forth. So it's really working, there's a bit of shoulder stability up here, which really working that core here, trying to keep his bum down and keeping that nice parallel shape the whole way through. What we're going to do, we're going to work all the way up to the end of the ladder and bring it all the way back. You'll notice as you start to get a bit fatigued, this way you'll really want to lift your ball up in there to take a bit of slack off your, your core section. This way you really want to dig in, brace that core section, really feel the burn. And then he'll rest as he gets to the end of the season. Woo! So, final exercise of the strength workout, what have you got? So, similar pattern compared to the last one where we were working on that red up core strength again. It's exactly the same principle, this time working in a unilateral sense. So, what we want here is Connie's going to pick one kettlebell up, and from this position, so it's almost going to be anti-rotation. So in a way, this kettlebell is going to try and drag him down this way. I'm going to say nice and strong here, so it's really worth this oblique on this side. And he's going to gently walk, holding the kettlebell, he can hold his arm like he wants for balance. And all I want him to do for this position is continue walking for about 15, 20 meters down to the end of the platform. Nice, trying to keep nice and controlled. You'll really feel that firing in the obliques. So this is working unilaterally, so this is working one side. Okay. And drop it there. And uh, perform the exact same procedure on the way back, just using the opposite hand. 
This is just a big Aldi shop. <laughs> And this one then, you have to be smart as well, obviously the heavier the weight, the, the more beneficial it will be for you, but I don't want you to have a weight where you can't even pick it up and it's dragging across your legs, so I want you to choose a weight carefully, so you're not dragging it against yourself, so you can actually hold it just by the side of your One thing you do find as well is when you step, to be conscious of keeping your foot flat because it does roll out with the weight sometimes. Yeah, so, so, so you I have just, to try and keep your feet. It's content there, that's also where on your coordination and balance as well. It's the perfect assets for a goalkeeper. So that's it for the strength workout. Thank you very much, Jordan. Thank you for talking us through that. That is extremely valuable, not only for me, but for everyone watching as goalkeepers. So thank you for that. No problem. But like Jordan said, all these movements are very applicable for building strength for your goalkeeping. There's no point in doing exercises which don't apply and help you on the pitch. So that was what that strength workout was all about, developing your game, helping you to improve, helping me to improve, because that's the aim. Thank you for watching. Please make sure you tune in next week where we'll be bringing you a different gym workout for goalkeepers, this time focusing on power exercises. That's it from us. Cheers, mate. Thank you for that. No problem. As always, please like, share, subscribe, keep the channel growing. We really do appreciate the support. Let us know how you get on in the comments. Let us know if it helps. But once again, thank you for watching. Speak to you in a bit. And you can stand to the side and talk me through. Do you, um, Joe, for these ones, do you want me to actually do the demo or? What, what do you, do you think? think? How do the exercises that we just do? Blah, 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 blah. How do the movements that we just showed, just showed, I can't, that doesn't performed. sound. Performed. Just performed. That's why I does engineering, it's clever. <laughs> <laughs> right.